Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to talk about how to use Luminar AI to take your iPhone photos, make them better, and then send them off to Instagram. It's a really easy workflow and I'll walk you through it every step. Uh, before we get started, I want to take a moment to say hello to everyone who's watching. All That Matters, welcome. Katherine Evans, glad you're here. Uh, looks like All That Matters has a question before we get going. It says, when can we expect Boca AI and Sky 2.0 Sky AI 2.0 to be released, and can we get some more Sky styles compared to what we get now? All right, so those two features are gonna be coming later this year. Uh, most likely Sky AI 2.0 will be coming out before Boca AI. Both of those will be free updates for all Luminar AI users. I don't have exact dates that I can share quite yet, but um, they are coming and they are actively being de developed. So you have that to look forward to. They're gonna be awesome new features. You can read about them on our website. If you look at um, skylum.com, go to Luminar AI there in the header, scroll down, it's gonna talk a little bit about some of those features that are coming later this year. So um, hope you guys get a chance to go take a look at that. They're very exciting, and I think they'll really add some great stuff to your workflow. Um, as far as getting more Sky Styles, I encourage you to go to the marketplace on our website, skylum.com slash marketplace. There are many, many Sky Packs that you can download there. Uh, they are premium, meaning they do cost money. Uh, you're also welcome to join our Luminar X membership, which includes uh, Sky and template deliveries every month. And that's a really great value if you're looking to acquire more of those types of assets. The other thing I can re highly recommend with regard to skies is to make sure every time there's a beautiful sunrise or sunset, get out there with your camera and capture your own images. This will let you make your images that you use those sky replacements in completely unique, 100% yours. And um, for a lot of you who belong to camera clubs and photo clubs, if your club is competitive, many times those clubs will ask that you only use elements that you created. So the club that I'm actually president of, that's in our bylaws, that you're only able to use elements and composites that are of your own creation. So using a sky that's in Luminar AI that comes built in, unfortunately, we dis disqualify those images from being in our competitions. You have to capture your own sky. So I recommend that you get out there and start compiling your own sky library so your work is 100% yours. Hello, Manuel. Hello, JGmail28. Pat, so glad you guys are able to join us. Let's go ahead and jump into today's edit. All right, up here on the screen, I have a photo of my cat, McAllen. And this was captured at Christmas time. And as you can see, he was being very, very naughty. Uh, it was a struggle to keep him out of the Christmas tree this year. Uh, he was just under a year old, or actually just over a year old at that point. This was, this was his first Christmas with us, his first time being around a Christmas tree. And it was very enticing. Thankfully, we didn't put ornaments on the tree. I think they would have been destroyed. Uh, but he did a pretty good job of um, putting some good wear and tear on our tree itself. So, um, but this is a picture I, I grabbed of him right before I pulled him out of the tree. Uh, he was just too cute and I was laughing so hard I had to capture the moment before I moved on. So let's go ahead and work with this. Let me show you here what I did. So we're here in Photos for Mac and this is automatically brought over to my computer because I snapped it with my iPhone with the iPhone camera and it automatically gets added to my photos library. I can then open up my photos library on my Mac, on my big computer, and edit my photos here. So I'm gonna click on the edit button and click revert to original because I've already edited this one. So here's the original as it came straight out of my iPhone. I'm gonna go up to the ellipses menu here at the top and I'm gonna choose Luminar AI. And this will take me to Luminar AI inside of photos for Mac. We'll give that a second to load up. It looks like there's a question in the chat from James. Will luminosity masks ever be added to AI or do we have to continue to use Luminar 4 or other software? James, unfortunately I have no news on that front. I'm not anticipating that it will be added back, but if that feature is really important to you, make sure you send an email to support at skylum.com and not only make the request that you want luminosity masks back, but make sure you include a couple of the end result that you're trying to get from using those luminosity masks. The more information we have, the more why behind what you're trying to accomplish and the end result that you're trying to accomplish will help us better gauge how to help you get there. And our goal is to come up with new and innovative technologies, not necessarily recreate old ones. So we might even be able to come up with something that's newer and cooler than the luminosity masks. So make sure you send your feedback into support at skylum.com. We'll get that registered and shared with our developers for their consideration. So appreciate you trying to make Luminar AI better. 
Um, Pat says, sweet boy. Yeah, he's he is pretty sweet. He's pretty naughty, but he's pretty darn cute. All right. So we have uh, Luminar AI up as photo um, as a photos extension. You can see that up here at the top, it says photos and Luminar AI. So let's go ahead and I want to scroll down here. I recently discovered this template collection called Animal Friends. And I think it's a really fun one to work with when you're doing pet photos. So let's go ahead and click through a few of these and see what we like. I'm gonna go ahead and Faded looks nice. Park Life, a lot of these are a little bit on the very, they're very golden, very uh, very warm. I think Faded looks good though. I like that as a starting point I think is really nice. So let's go ahead from there and click over into the Edit tab. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my Enhance AI a little bit. And let's go ahead and go to our Composition AI. Since I'm gonna be sharing this on Instagram, what I wanna do is make this a square crop. Now you don't have to crop to square for Instagram anymore, but originally when Instagram first came out, everything was square. So I still like to use that format when it fits the image because that gives you the most real estate and the best viewing experience inside of Instagram. So let's go ahead and crop this in a little bit and really make McAllen the center of our image. All right, so that looks really good. I like that crop quite a lot. I'll hit return on my keyboard and now he fills the frame. There we go. <laughs> Gave it a second to refresh. There was some oddest distortion there as it rendered. All right, now let's go ahead and move down. Let's do a little bit of structure. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of boost and that's just gonna give us a little bit of added detail in there. We already have some details being used from the template and that's just large details. I might add a little bit of medium details there as well. And let's scroll down here. We've got a mood that's being set. So that's the faded LUT. We can take a look, look at that and we can make that a little bit more or a little bit less. I think actually I'm gonna pull that up a little bit higher, but then I'm gonna also increase that contrast. There we go. That's looking good. I, I like how that's turning out. All right, let's scroll down here. We also have some super contrast being used. That's always a good one. Um, that's using the highlights contrast. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that back the other way. And you'll see that in those brightest spots kind of behind them, that's bringing down those highlights a little bit. So that's adding a little bit more contrast back there and making those highlights a little bit less harsh. So from there, let me take a look here and see what else I wanna do. I know I definitely wanna add a vignette and I wanna make his eyes stand out a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add the vignette first. And again, that'll darken down those edges, especially with some of these bright highlights around the edges. We'll go ahead and bring that amount slider down to negative 100. Go into my advanced settings. I'm gonna bring that feather up really strong. I'm gonna bring that size a little bit smaller. And the reason I keep this down at negative 100 as I'm setting up some of these other settings is because I wanna see exactly where that vignette is being placed. Now I can click on choose subject and I can make sure that vignette is right here over McAllen and he is right there at the center of that faded darkness. So now that we have that set, we can do a little bit of inner light and that'll brighten him up a little bit. And now we'll grab that amount slider and we'll pull that back until it looks natural. And for this particular image, I'm gonna use a fairly dark vignette because it really draws us into our subject. All right, from there, what I wanna do, I'm gonna click on choose subject to click out of that. And we'll go to local masking and we'll do a little bit of work to make his eyes really stand out. I'm gonna go ahead and click on add basic and I'm going to use a paint mask let's go ahead and grab our brush I'll use the bracket keys on my keyboard to make that brush size pretty small and I'm just going to brush in right over his eyes so this way once this mask is applied all of the changes I make here are only going to affect his eyes let's go ahead and add a little bit of contrast there we go that looks good definitely add some structure make those eyes stand out and I think the color's good, the rest of that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that. It's gonna be a subtle change, but there's the before and the after. I really see it in the left eye. That makes the biggest difference there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our overall before and after. Here's the before and the after. You know, one more thing I think I wanna add to this is maybe some mystical. I love mystical. It just adds such a dreamy look to everything. So let's go to mystical. We'll pull up on that amount. I'm gonna pull it up relatively high. It just gives everything kind of a nice glow. And then let's go down here to colorize. Now, typically when I use Mystical, I do pull the warmth slider up to the right to give it more warmth. In this case, the image is already so warm. I'm actually gonna pull that down a little bit just to kind of take the edge off of that warmth. I think right about there looks awesome. 
So now that I'm done with my image, again, we can take a look at our before and our after. If you think the changes went a little too far, you can always go down here to the overall amount slider at the bottom and pull that back a little. I think maybe right about, you know, 70, 80% often is a good place to land. So right about there I think looks great. We'll just click on save changes and that'll take us right back to our photos library. Now from there, what I can do is I'll click done and this image is now saved to my iCloud library, part of my photos library, and it's going to go straight back to my iPhone. So now I can go ahead and open up my iPhone, pull up the Instagram app and go into my library here, locate that picture that I just edited Give it just a moment, it's still downloading. And there we go, now I have my picture that I just edited here on my iPhone, and I can go ahead and share that to Instagram and with my family, with my friends, and show them the, the naughty antics of my cat. So it's a really fun and easy workflow for iPhone photos. It works well with, um, obviously this particular workflow is for Mac, but if you're using another um, brand of uh, smartphone, and you're on a Windows machine, you can always send your images back and forth with either Dropbox, Google Drive, or another cloud sharing device or cloud sharing service. And that'll accomplish a lot of the same thing. So I hope that's helpful for you. Let me take a look here at the chat and see if there are any other questions. I wanna say hello to James, hello Blood Dragon HG. All right, looks like we've covered all of the questions for today. So if you guys like these shows, make sure you give us a thumbs up. That lets our, um, our bosses know that you want us to keep presenting these shows. I really have a lot of fun being here and sharing Luminar AI and photography with you. So I hope you have a great afternoon. I will see you tomorrow for our weekly wrap up. I'll be here with Vanelli. Um, until then, get out there and make some pictures and have a great day. Bye everyone.